let's come back. So, uh, I had to laugh a little bit after reading the first question because look what a coincidence, it's incredible. How is the breathing technique by the three explosive movements with the hands in the Chan Gong Road Chuan? So, the ones that just joined the training for the first time today, maybe you haven't seen them, but with the other ones that uh, already participated in some of the sessions. So in the last live session, there was one movement, which in comparison to the rest of practices that we normally do, looked quite, let's say, powerful or explosive. So it was like uh, one, two, open one two three yeah so open then we had one two three open so from one two three so. and why do we actually try to avoid too many explosive movements in the way or meanwhile let's say I do it like this yeah I don't know how other people do it but the thing is like this from time to time I have to practice to be explosive I have to practice to let the energy express itself and that this energy goes out. But what I realize by, practic by, by practicing in such a way is, if you shoot the energy out, it is getting exhausting. Yeah? It just makes tired, it's exhausting. So shooting energy out means it's exhausting. So therefore the one thing that we need if you practice a lot of explosive movements in the, in the way that how I showed you right now, then it is very important that you make sure if energy gets out somehow, we need to make sure energy gets in. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. You cannot express energy if you don't have energy. You cannot use energy if you don't have energy. If you use energy, but you don't have enough energy inside of you, the only thing that happens is you are going to deplete yourself just more and more. It is possible to invest a lot of energy now in the practicing but also in other areas of your life it is possible that you continuously invest energy out there but what the key point of all of this is if your input is not able to compensate whatever output you are giving into this world so that means if your output is simply too high all the time then you are going to deplete yourself. So how do you know that this is happening? Because sooner or later, some people, they get the burnout. Other people, they just feel super weak for a very long time. You don't have energy. It just feels like you are depleted. You are out of energy. Yeah, your battery is deeply discharged, which means it's not done only then by eating something to regain energy, no it's depleted to a very, very deep level. Yeah, this is when I talk about energy depletion, when, when you are depleted. So therefore it's important if you do something where the energy is expressed, make sure that you also have a way how that energy gets in. Okay, what does it have to do now with, the, with this three movements? If the energy gets out somewhere before that, it must get in. And the intake is just the amount and the depth of how deep you can inhale with one inhalation, with one, one time of inhaling. So how is the breathing in the three explosive movements? 
before the three explosive movements, you inhale. You inhale. You inhale the energy, you build up, yeah, you, you keep it, you keep the tension and then you express it. Yeah? Just the, sometimes, especially in the Chan Gong Road Run, the nice part about these forms is that you can actually see where is the movement, where is the inhalation and where is the exhalation sometimes because the movements are so big. So when I'm this is the inhalation. This is the inhalation. This year I'm in the center. I'm it's all in stored in this area. Yeah my my concentration is like in this area. And then from here, I just let it out. Yeah. So this turning, this opening, you inhale into, in, you condense the body. Look, my body, like it gets small, small, small. And then it opens. It's small. And then it opens. Then. The second movement, I bring it back, but it's, you see, it's, I'm also small here, <sighs> and then I shoot out. Then I come, come back here, small, and then bring the hands together. Yeah, The first one is out, front, in. But it's different muscle groups that you are tensing up there. Okay, so I hope somehow this question is answered. Before you shoot the energy out, you need to get energy in. So you inhale always before the movement. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. In, out. This. Uh, this is the way of these three movements. What is the right, uh, second question, what is the right sitting posture, especially for our back for meditation? The one that doesn't compress the spine. The one that is um, allowing all the channels inside of the body structurally already to be open. So simply said, the one which is not compressing the spine. So this is why the back is more or less, uh, yeah. it's erected. That is maybe a good expression. It's erected. You're, you're attentive. Yeah, so let's say if you would look from the side, it's not this. Uh, you can't sit like this. It's erected, it's like... And it's extremely useful to use like a sitting pillow, which is allowing your knees to be lower than your, than your pelvis. This also makes it easier to keep like the right uh, sitting posture. Yes. And also I think in the, in the, in the self massage practice that you can also like watch there for free. I think it's the same posture that I am actually making the practices in. Uh, so you can check it there again. Elsewise, the meditation part is going to be one of the final. 
it's gonna be one of the final modules from the 12 months course so that's gonna come but before we sit and meditate and take care of the mind before that first we need to gain a lot of energy physical energy physical strength it's not good to sit right from the beginning first of all right now we are being active we are using this complete year to gain energy to become vital to use energy to yes and then afterwards once you have enough energy then you can sit because why if you don't have energy there is nothing to circulate if you don't have energy there's nothing to give if you don't have energy uh, if there's not enough fuel the rocket cannot leave this planet it's not possible we need a lot a lot of energy we need a lot a lot of energy the whole idea why we make like the qigong practices the kung fu practices why we make energy practice is because we need energy we need the fuel we need to save the fuel because one day we will need it yes Can you talk about the importance of balance, balancing body and mind? It's not just about balancing body and mind. This whole course, the whole Shaolin Temple, everything that I think we are doing since the last 20, 30 years, the whole point about sharing all of this is because I think balance is key but not just balance about body and mind no balance uh, body and mind are like just only two aspects of what is mm, of what is like relevant for each like human being in this world because everybody has a body and everybody has a mind so of course body and mind are two aspects that need to be balanced but the more things you are having inside of your lifetime which are important for you the more it is becoming relevant um, what you are balancing there I mentioned it in, a, in some talk there before already yeah? everything that is important for you personally in your lifetime these are the things you need to find a balance for the f yeah, it's about balancing our complete life Balancing inhalation and exhalation. Balancing the time that you invest for yourself with the time that you spend for other ones. Balancing the time where you are active and balancing the time where you are passive. Balancing the soft, the soft and releasing uh, um, types of practices and the hard and sweating and exhausting practices. Balancing the time that you invest only in yourself and then also like into other people. Balancing the investment uh, or balancing the amount of energy that you spend and the amount of energy that you receive. Balancing the money that you spend and the money that you earn. This whole life is about balance. So, and how do you know that you are out of balance? Because you are running into trouble. If you spend more money than you earn, you're going to run into trouble. Yeah, simple. If you invest more energy than you actually get, you're going to run into trouble because you're going to feel depleted, you're going to feel depressed. Something's not correct. You're not going to feel happy. Something is not correct there in this life. If you keep on helping, 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 helping people, and uh, and supporting other ones but you have the feeling that there is no appreciation or any thankfulness or anything like this coming back to you also one day um, you're gonna realize it that this is also not the way to do it so it's not just about balancing body and mind 
balance is the key for everything in this in this teaching or in whatever I'm sharing here in the YouTube and whatsoever yeah balance harmony unity it doesn't matter which word we're taking there it involves balance it involves two sides that we now as humans have to invest our lifetime in in finding the appropriate um, let's say the appropriate perspective how to yeah, how to live with these forces there is no way to escape it there's only a way to become more fine look around you ask yourself what does what does everything around me what what does it reflect in comparison or in relation to what what you are having inside there so yeah now is there shaolin tips to wake up earlier easily it's not a shaolin tip but there are just more things that when they come together they are making it more easy let's say they are making it more easy to keep up a certain rhythm which means watch your eating times don't eat too late yeah if you can you eat i don't know around six o'clock seven o'clock you eat dinner and then that's it afterwards you don't eat anymore or more simple set don't eat like two three three hours before you try to lay down and sleep three hours before that don't eat this is number one then of course if you want to wake up early go to bed early yeah if you want to wake up at four and go to bed at three it's going to be hard <laughs> yeah and then slowly and consistency so that means step by step bring a little 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 structure in you need to program this into your flesh and blood yeah if right now for the for the past five to ten years you used to stay awake uh, very late well of course it's going to be very hard to then suddenly now have this shift in the mind and wake up early that's why you need to program yourself step by step yeah and so many things come together eating habits sleeping habits yeah and then of course also if even if you go early to bed you don't eat something uh, late um, late in the evening but you are lying in the bed and are still thinking about all the problems that you have in your life well also next morning you're not gonna wake up early or at least not refreshed because it's not necessarily our body which is like um, which is using a lot of energy during our sleeping time very often it is like what you're doing with the mind that is exhausting you for the next day if you're mumbling around all the negative things uh, on a daily basis and what you don't like and and whatsoever and what's negative and complaining about this and complaining about that so the next part about how to wake up refreshed is learn to let go in the evening before learn to let go in the evening before if you take the same problems from the from the past day into the new day well of course I don't want to wake up if I know already I'm gonna face the same problems and face the same issues so therefore learning to let go in the mind also if you sleep you try to sleep if you eat you eat if you train you train if you sleep you sleep you don't sleep and talk you don't talk and eat you don't eat and think about sleeping you heard all of this before but this is exactly uh, exactly what it is 
if you sleep learn to sleep that means learn to rest yeah it is not the amount of how long you are staying there and lying there horizontally in the bed this is not the important part the important part is while you are lying there what is what are you doing which means are you in recovery mode are you recovering so what we want is recovery we don't need sleep we need to recover sleeping or the position of sleeping is just allowing us normally normally to put ourselves our body and our mind into a state where then naturally your body would start recovering but because of our let's say life circumstances and however we have been uh, with whatever we have been polluted already yeah this is why sometimes it's difficult that we cannot return to the natural to the natural state of what our body is supposed to do yeah how many hours of sleep five hours six hours if you recover if you recover because even if you lay in the bed 14 hours doesn't mean that after 14 hours you wake up and you are recovered there is a difference between those things so what you can do look for yourself think about for yourself what is the difference between sleeping and recovering and recovering is what we also talk in this first question recovering is if the energy input is higher than your energy output then you recover then you recharge this is the this is the the way to look to look for yes now why do i feel like a center line is swinging back and forth during meditation um it happens to some people it doesn't happen to everyone but from my perspective from my point of view and how i see it and how i experience it it is something is balancing there something is balancing so therefore nothing to worry about i would say keep going now in one of the last practices in the last module i presented one standing practice and it is the squatting monkey and one question is in the squatting monkey i can't stand in the middle or i lean too much forward so which means here for example uh, if you are like this then the head is too much to the front that your head the knees and the toes have to be in one in one line yeah so i the, the nose the knees the toes you try to keep it in one line yeah and uh, if you cannot do it at the moment then try to just stand right in front of a wall so the toes are touching the wall and then you slowly start and get into that position while the toes are touching the wall because then the knees cannot extend the toes and the face can also cannot extend to the front so and if you then have the feeling that like yeah but i cannot hold it because i'm falling backwards then just keep trying or at least go in the position and hold the balance for five seconds then increase it 10 seconds there is no other way to to slowly get into all of these correct postures by doing them but step by step so if you realize 
that you are leaning a little bit too much to the front, then correct the posture. Even if you are still leaned a little bit too much to the front, just correct it. Go a little bit more to the back. And the next time that you practice, you do the same. Yes. So this, I hope it helps. Yeah. Now, one more question, the final question for today. During some of the positions, I continuously keep telling you to relax. Relax the muscles or release the muscles. So, when you will be at this position of practicing, for example, the squatting monkey position. You will realize very quickly this is a position where it's impossible it's impossible to stay in that position without any muscles being contracted but also the same is like when we look at the mabu at our horse stance yeah if you touch the legs right now then of course of course the muscles are tense the question is how tense and especially what about the rest of the body what about your back your shoulders your neck your arms your abdomen how about all the other muscles so when I'm telling you in any position, doesn't matter which one, if I'm telling you relax, then I mean remove all the unconscious tension. The conscious tension is not the problem. The unconscious tension is the problem. So which means for example in the Mabu, look, right now it's like is soft yeah your body is soft you're relaxed it's not super tense it's relaxed here you can still turn but the the power the strength is still there but it's not like a is not like a fixed strength so the muscles they can still move yes so they can still they are still flexible everything is still soft yeah. so this is the type relax relax Yeah. So this is this is the type of uh, of how we want to be able to use um, our body. The only way how we can move our body is by contracting certain muscle groups. Yes, that's the whole point. So, but learning how to get rid of unconscious tension. This is what I mean when I'm telling you relax more. But keep the structure of the posture. Yes. All right. So I hope this time, live session number five. I hope now uh, some of you are more happy. So we tried this time some practice, some question and answer. Now let's see. Maybe in the next session, then. Uh, yeah. Tan is gonna tell me again, nah, Shifu, the people are complaining. You talk too much. Okay, then we make again 90 minutes of training, no problem. <laughs> Alright, no. Have a nice, have a nice start into the next week. And see you all uh, soon again.
Yes. All right. Bye-bye.